Hello and welcome to the handover video for your new roller team motorhome. We'll start on the outside of the vehicle, we'll work our way around and when we come back to the habitation door I'll take you inside. First thing we come across on the exterior of the vehicle is the fuel filling point. Now you get two keys with your roller team, one for everything Fiat and one for everything roller team. Take the Fiat key, insert it into the fuel cap, turn it to the side, there's a little hook for hanging the cap on, on the side of the flap there while you fill with fuel. Directly below that is the add blue. The add blue doesn't have a gauge. What it does have is a warning light that comes on on the dashboard. Now it will come on to begin with when you've got about 1200 miles to empty. So just the next time you're at filling station, fill with add blue. If you forget to do that, when you get to about 300 miles to empty, it'll start to flash and it'll be really annoying on the dashboard, so you won't ignore that. However, if you do, the vehicle, once there's no add blue left, will go into limp mode and you'll get no more than three or five miles an hour out of her and you need to get to a garage and fill it up then. Once you refill, it takes a little while for the gauge to reset, so don't be surprised if the light stays on after you've refilled. Opening the passenger door and inside the vehicle, the first thing you'll see underneath the passenger seat is your tool kit. There's also a modified VIN plate down here, which is put on by Roller Team, or Trigano, the parent company. The original plate will be underneath the bonnet, on the subject of which, to access that, first bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard, which takes us round to the front of the vehicle. So after you've released the bonnet to the first position to release it completely, hand in the middle of the bonnet you'll find a lever, then the bonnet lifts, there's the lever there. Bonnet stay, and over to the left hand side. Now the only thing you're going to have to do is top up washer fluid. Your brake fluid, coolant re reservoir and steering power steering fluid are all in a vehicle of this age just checked at service time. You shouldn't have to go anywhere near them. When you do have to access them, there are little catches in this section of um, plastic comes away, allowing easy access. Down the front of the engine block is where you'll find your dipstick. And if you do need to put any oil in, oil filler cap on top of the rocker cover there. Now, for any reason you find yourself in a situation where you either have to give someone a jump start or you have to jump start your own vehicle, take your Fiat key, release it, insert it in here, which will open this little cover. There you'll find a blade that you can attach the positive jump lead to, and over here there is a ground, an earth, or a negative, call it what you will. Connect here and there, positive, negative, and then jump start the vehicle. Moving to the off side of the vehicle, we find a few access points. First one is fresh water up here, and for that, roller team key. In there, open, garden hose, fill it up. To drain it, we'll have to go inside the vehicle and look at the interior of the fresh water tank. Underneath the uh, rear passenger seat inside the vehicle is located the fresh water tank. If you unscrew the access lid at the top, and if you look inside, you'll see two tea pieces. Now they allow the draining of the fresh water tank. The one on top, the longer tea piece, when you release that and pull the bung out, the water will drain down, leaving you about 20% capacity in the tank, which is more than enough for traveling to flush toilets, make tea, make coffee, etc. And it stops you carrying a lot of weight around from campsite to campsite. When you arrive at campsite, just put that bung back in and fill the tank up to the top. For a full winter drain down, you remove the bottom one and that will allow the entire tank to drain down through that lower placed hole. So that's how you drain the freshwater tank. To drain the grey tank, just underneath this wet locker, there's a T-piece handle, which you pull, so, and that opens the valve. The grey tank, the exit point, is in the middle of the vehicle, lined up with this handle. So drive over a soak away, pull this handle out, your grey will drain. 
once it's drained, push it back in to close the valve. Immediately above that handle, the wet locker. This is protected from the rest of the vehicle and it's an excellent place to keep wedges, um, wet cables, um, wet ground sheets, anything like that that you wouldn't want to put into the vehicle and introduce damp. Then we come to the gas locker. Room for two six kilo propane bottles. There's a single regulator, it's not a dual. Anti-clockwise to open the valve. This is not a drive safe pigtail or a drive safe regulator. So you have to close the gas valve when in transit. Electric hookup point is just here. Always plug into the vehicle first, carrying the dead end of the lead to the power point, connect and switch on. Never connect, switch on and carry a live lead over to your vehicle. Next access door is for the toilet. The toilet cassette is released by pulling up this blue handle here and drawing the cassette out. If you feel any resistance when you're trying to draw it out, stop, go back into the inside of the vehicle and check. You may well have not closed the blade properly. When you arrive at the disposal point, unscrew the cap, hold the cassette thus, press the blue button here to break the air seal that allows the contents to flow out. After you've emptied it, rinse it a couple of times. The cap has a measuring container for your chemicals. Fluids in here, or a pod if you're using the newer style. Always use green in Scotland, not blue. There are many campsites that won't accept blue. The formaldehyde kills the bacteria in septic tanks. Once you've added the chemicals, you can either flush inside and add about a litre of water or you can add the water in here but a litre of water mix the chemicals around to activate them and then return the cassette until you hear the click of the blue safety catch engaging now we come to the rear garage doors there's one on each side of the vehicle and it gives you access to an enormous garage space here you can store your hookup leads, there's some hoses over there and the uh, winder for the wind out awning. You'll also see a winder hanging here. This is for the fixed bed in the rear of the vehicle. It's an island bed that can rise up and down. So if you want more headroom while lying in bed and you're not carrying a lot of equipment in your garage, you can wind the bed down and the bed will come down. If you've got a lot of stuff that you want to have in your garage, you can wind the bed up. Obviously it's harder to wind it up than it is to wind it down. You're fighting against gravity. Once you're in the position that you want the bed to be in, there's a clutch and lock in the interior here. And if you just push that away from yourself, that will lock the bed in place and she won't move. When you want to adjust the bed, you have to engage that clutch again. While we're in here, I'll show you where the frost protection valve is and how it is incorporated into the drain down procedure for the fresh water system. In a cupboard at the back of the garage, you'll see the frost protection valve. At the moment, the valve is in the open position where that little diamond lever is in line with the pipe. When the temperature in here drops below a certain point, and that's usually about three degrees Celsius, this happens. And the water starts to drain out of your boiler. What you can't see is at the back of this valve, a blue button has popped out. To reset the valve, get the temperature in here up to about 10 degrees Celsius, close the valve and put your hand down the back, feel for the button and push the button in. On the other side of the vehicle, there is another hatch 
for getting access to the garage. Beside which is the flue from the boiler. Never block that. If that gets blocked, the boiler, there's a sensor in there that senses the back pressure and it will switch your boiler off. And finally, vents at the back of the fridge. Again, leave them clear. It allows cool air to circulate the back rear of the fridge, allowing the heat that the fridge takes away from its interior to dissipate. The wind out awning, unfortunately it's raining today, so I won't demonstrate it, but I will show you how it works on the day of handover. Right, time to go inside. So we're in the interior of the vehicle now. We have five belted seats and the vehicle will comfortably sleep four. Two in the double bed in the rear and two in the double bed that drops down above the dinette area. Always look below when you're bringing it down to make sure that you don't foul the double bed in any way. There's a ladder for getting access up onto the bed and you can see it's just lying in the rear bed here at the moment. So how do you know that your boiler's full of water? Well, if you turn any tap on and it spurts for a little bit, there's some air in the boiler. Turn the tap to the hot position and when you get continuity of flow there and across in cold, you know that the boiler is charged and is full of water. It's now safe to switch on the central heating and the hot water. Now, just above the fridge in the kitchen area, you'll find the two control panels, one for roller team and one for the Truma combi unit. Now, this control panel here mostly switches banks of switches on and gives you indications of what's happening around the vehicle. It's very important you switch on this panel first before switching on the Truma panel because the first thing the Truma panel does when it switches on is it looks for a 12 volt supply. If you haven't switched this panel on, you won't be giving this panel a 12 volt supply and it'll come up with an error code. So let's start by switching on. And you'll see straight away a little marker indicating that we're plugged into mains electricity. Pressing this button here gives us a reading of the state of play in the freshwater tank, 66%. Leisure battery is showing 14.5 volts, as you would expect, because we're plugged into mains and it's currently in the charging mode. Vehicle battery, 13.1, so there's a full charge in the vehicle battery as well. Over here, a note of the internal temperature of the vehicle, 30 degrees, it's rather a warm afternoon. This switches on all the lights. It's the master switch for the lights, you see, and back on again. With that light symbol illuminated, all the individual light switches around the vehicle will operate. This is the switch for putting on the awning light outside the vehicle, and this switches on the water pump. Get into the habit of using the water pump on demand. Switch it on if you're going to wash dishes, use the washroom, have a shower, switch it off when you don't. If you run that and accidentally have a, a tap cracked open and no water in the tank, the pump will run and will burn itself out. So only put it on when required. So now we've got 12 volt supply, we can switch on the Truma control panel. Everything below the line, now let's switch everything off. Everything below the line indicates what you can do with the system. Everything above the line is what you've asked the system to do. So when we first switch on, we get a flashing light on the symbol for the interior of the vehicle. This is the internal heating system, central heating if you wish. I dial up the temperature required, 30 degrees. It's currently 30 degrees in the van, so the heating's not going to come on. Uh, if I press enter now, it's now you'll see that little symbol indicating the central heating's on. This little symbol indicating we've chosen electricity as our power source and the fan speed is on one with the hot air. Once the hot air's been heated up by the boiler, it'll be circulated around the van by that fan system. Right, okay, let's go back and we'll switch the heating off as it's already unbearably warm. Next, we have hot water. It's off. Eco is about 40 degrees Celsius, plenty of temperature to do your washing of your dishes. And then we have hot, which is about 65 degrees, and that's plenty for a shower. There is boost. 
Now that will heat up the water at the expense of energy going to the central heating. It won't get it any hotter, it will just get there quicker. And we'll switch it off. Oh, actually, we'll leave the water on. We'll just leave it on eco so that I can demonstrate how to select your power source. Electric to electric one. You'll notice the lightning bolt changes from one to two. Electric one, you're drawing 900 watts of energy. Electric two, you're drawing 1800 watts of energy. You should be able to draw 1800 watts, no problem, on a modern campsite. And an older campsite, particularly on the continent, you may want to restrict yourself to 900. Because by the time you have the fridge running, uh, if you switch on an electric hairdryer or something like that, you could um, trip the switches on the power supply. So, or trip the fuses, I should say. As well as electricity, you can choose gas. Uh, and if you were off grid, you'd run on gas. A mixture of gas and 900 watts, a mixture of gas and 1800 watts. Again, all it will do is get things hot quicker. It won't get them any hotter. And if you're on a campsite, you're paying for an electric hookup. You may as well use electricity. Now, let's switch off the hot water. Now with everything switched off, if you go to the fan setting and enter off vent, you can use the fan and you have fan speeds up to 10 to try and cool down the air inside the oh, inside the vehicle. Now, it's not air conditioning. It will just move the hot air around. But with the doors open and the fan blowing, it might help you on a very, very hot day. Timer, you can set timers to come on so that you can have your central heating or your hot water coming on at a certain time. If you're up in the hill walking and you want to have a hot shower, you plan to be back by four, hot water on at half past four, nice hot shower when you get back to the van at four o'clock. Clock settings to change the timing on the clock. And finally, settings. So in here, you can change temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You can change the brightness of the screen. You can change the clock from 12 to 24 hours. You can change the language that everything is in and so on. To switch off, always switch this panel off first, press and hold, continue to hold while it's in app, when it reaches off, release, and then that panel will switch off. Wait till that panel goes completely dark, as it has here, and then we can come over here and switch off the 12 volt power supply. You'll notice it came up with the option app as I was switching off. If you select app with your iNet ready Truma, if you have placed a SIM card into the box here, then you can remotely do everything that we've just done on this panel with an app on your phone. If you're in the van itself, you can do that on Bluetooth too. So making sure that you have the gas turned on, the cooker is very easy to operate. Press and turn the dial to the maximum position. Hold it for a couple of seconds to allow the thermocouple to heat up, then release. And it's the same on all, all three hobs. Down to a peep, and then back up to full and off. Back up to full and off, up to full and off. Now there is no safety cut out. When you bring this down, it doesn't cut the flame out. You see the warning sign there. So make sure that these are cold and off before you bring this down. This is safety glass, and if it gets hot, it will shatter into thousands of pieces. Similarly, down below, we have a combination oven grill. Grill is on the right-hand side, so push and turn. This time, though, we have to press a button. Keep the dial pressed in till the thermocouple heats up, and then release. And then similarly for the oven, just turning the opposite direction, the oven lights and then stays on, turning to whichever gas mark your recipe requires. So when we were emptying the cassette, I told you about the blade. That's this lever here. So the toilet seat can revolve to give you as much leg room as you so desire. The blade, if you look inside the bowl, opens and closes with the lever. As long as you have the water pump switched on, the toilet flush is done simply by pressing this button 
rinse the bowl, close the lever, put the lid down. And if you look at the back of the toilet, you'll see a little green gauge and there's a little bit of red showing. As the cassette starts to fill up, that red will move and when it's showing all red it's time to empty the cassette but it is good practice to get into the habit of emptying the cassette every time you leave a campsite. The windows operate with friction controlled rams pressing the button to release the catch in the window and then just push the window to a desired position and to close it you simply pull it back in but do it gently. They are only made of acrylic. Now there is a position that you can put the windows on at night which will allow air to enter the vehicle while you're sleeping so it doesn't get too stuffy but when traveling you must always have them in the completely closed position and this includes the skylight above the cab. They are only acrylic and if a crosswind catches underneath them it can tear them right off. Fly screens come down from the top and engage with the privy screen at the bottom. The privacy screen is moved by adjusting and releasing the lock. Release this slowly by hand. They are spring loaded and if you let them go all the way up, they can bounce and come off track. On the driver's door, you'll find the controls for the mirrors. There are four mirrors that are adjustable, two on each side. There is five positions on this little joystick. So there's a little dot when the marker is on the dot, everything is off. The first arrow controls the top mirror on the driver's side. Second position, the small bottom mirror. Third position is the small mo bottom mirror on the other door. And then we have the big mirror on the other door and then back to the off position. Adjustments on the dashboard here for headlight up and down adjustment, modes into the trip computer and windscreen wash on this side. So your wipers are on the other side, on this side obviously then you have your indicators and your light switches. This is the um, cruise control down here and there also is a speed limiter for low speeds. Being an automatic you always have to have your foot on the brake when starting the vehicle. The reversing camera is an automatic one. It engages as soon as you engage reverse gear. So if we start the engine up, the radio and uh, sat nav kicks into gear. And on top of the dashboard, there's a small aerial there, which is the receiver for the sat nav. So if I select reverse now, you'll see it automatically engages the reversing camera. Temperature control and fan speed control on the left, on the right hand side, direction and whether or not you recirculate or you're taking fresh air from outside. To operate the air conditioning, select cold position, have the fan on, press the button and the orange will come up. You can also have air conditioning with warm air, but it kind of defeats the purpose. And along the bottom, lock for the interior of the vehicle without setting any alarms. There's no heated rear window but this will demist the mirrors on the doors. Then we have hill start assist and traction control you can disable if you so desire as well. And so that concludes your handover video for your new roller team. We certainly hope that uh, your new motorhome will bring you lots of miles and lots of smiles. If you ever need us, we're on the end of the phone. Once again, thank you very much for choosing Highland Campervans.